Now at 5.30, small craft advisory. All day long here on NBC4, we've been alerting you about safety concerns on the water. It's a story you will only see on News 4. And now at 5, our consumer investigation continues with the stories of two families impacted by boating accidents and who are now pushing for change. Susan Hogan is working for you with this special report. Susan? Well, before we tell you what our investigation found, we want to introduce you to a Florida mom who would give anything for you to have met her little boy. But three years ago, seven-year-old Ryan died in a horrific boating incident. The family refuses to call his death an accident. July 17, 2014 started out like any summer day. We all loved being on the water. The Batchelder family gathered together along the shore of Lake Burton in Georgia. Well, we were commenting earlier that day that it was like heaven there. A possible foreshadowing for what was about to happen. Did Ryan love boating? Did he love being he on the He loved boat? being on the water. His room is actually decorated in the nautical theme, ironically. At the family's home in Lake Worth, Florida, Meg walked us through Ryan's short life in pictures. Oh One of her favorites, this photo. Teethy grin from ear to ear, still wet from a plunge in Lake Burton. This picture was taken just a couple days before the accident. The last time Meg saw Ryan alive, he was climbing on board this 2000 Malibu Response LX with his brother, cousins, and uncles. According to a police report, all four kids were sitting in the front of the boat. The driver was going in a circle to create waves to splash the kids in the bow. When the boat hit one of the waves, the bow took on a lot of water, and Ryan and his cousin were ejected out of the vessel. The driver, according to the police report, immediately put the vessel in reverse. When they realized Ryan was missing, the driver jumped in the water to look for Ryan and found him stuck in the propeller. Ryan died from his injuries. Ryan's mom and dad watched this horrific scene from shore. The first night, you're just, you're just thinking that it's impossible to survive. So you're thinking about how you'll end it. And but over time, Meg knew she needed to find a purpose to move forward and to give her little boy a legacy. His love for stuffed animals is the inspiration behind Little Hugs, a foundation that donates stuffed animals to children going through hardships. It's my way of continuing my relationship with Ryan and I, he was such a loving boy. And it's just my way of putting his love out into the world that he wasn't able to do here in person. His tragic accident hitting close to home for a California family. In 2006, Nikki Bell was close to graduating from college. This happy, playful 22-year-old from Paradise, California was looking forward to a full life. But while on a boat with her friends, Nikki's world came to a sudden stop. In a bizarre twist of fate, a passenger on the boat captured these images of the moment the bow started to swamp. You can see Nikki actually trying to hang on, but in the final shot, she's gone. Nikki was washed overboard and hit by the propeller, struck four times in the head. I know that you don't remember much about, do you remember anything about your accident? No, no. Nikki is now 34 years old. She and her family agreeing to their first television interview since the accident. Yeah. As a family, how has this changed you, mom or dad? <laughs> Can you talk? You guys are both going to cry. <laughs> In what way? It's changed a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, something you wouldn't wish on anybody. Today, Nikki is blind in one eye and has a severe brain injury from multiple skull fractures. A propeller from the boat struck her with such force, she lost a part of her frontal lobe. Well, it just sucks because I can't see out of my left eye, I can't taste, can't smell, I can't drive, and it's like, I'm freaking 34 years old. I want to drive. I want to do my own thing. In 2011, a jury found Mastercraft primarily at fault for the accident. The driver of the boat was found 20% responsible. The Bells argued the design of Mastercraft's X-45 boat was defective and the company didn't adequately test it. You assume that a company with, that puts out a product is going to, any company is going to test their product. 
before they put it out to the consumers. The jury awarded Nikki $30 million. In a statement to News 4, Mastercraft said, in part, the boat was not defective in design or manufacture. The accident which injured the plaintiffs in that case was unsafe operation of the boat. Mastercraft appealed the verdict, but ultimately settled the case without admitting liability. Mastercraft said it did not make any specific changes in its products as a result of the case. Ryan's parents have now filed a lawsuit against Malibu, claiming the company manufactured a boat which contains safety defects and failed to adequately test its Malibu Response LX bow rider to ensure that it performs safely. In a statement to News 4, Malibu told us it is truly saddened by the tragic loss of a young child. However, the company maintains the boat the Batch Elders had rented was used 14 years with no problems. In fact, after the investigation was complete, the company even told us the boat was rented again on two occasions without incident. Depositions in Ryan's case have begun, and News 4 obtained several of them. Malibu's current CEO testifying that safety is their number one priority. In our design and in our manufacture, absolutely. And I think our track record is just absolutely exemplary in the numbers of boats, people, hours that we have had without an incident. So we wanted to know more about the regulations around these boats. You may think a government agency is watching closely over boat manufacturers and rigorously testing new boat designs, but we found that's simply not the case. The surprising findings of our consumer investigation ahead for you at 6. Now, we have posted both of these lawsuits we just told you about, as well as some of the evidence and photos on our NBC Washington app. You can see that right now. You started this morning with the first story, and, and this is the second chapter of this, That's and you right. have another one coming up at 6. We do, and, and then 11. again at 11, and then tomorrow night as well. This is one of those stories. We wanted to roll it out this way for you. It's just unprecedented the way we did it, but there's so much because as we started looking into the mm -hmm. story, it was like an onion. We just kept peeling more and more and finding out more, and we're like, how are we going to tell this story the right way, and this is the right way. And thank right. goodness they told their story to you. I right. know. Poor families, yeah. what they've been through. And to share it with us, they've never done this before, yeah. and, and that's why we wanted to f go to Florida and go to California and do it ourselves because, you know, they're reliving this moment today, yes. right now, and watching this online. Right. And this is a massive boating community yes. here, all the way in Virginia, mm -hmm. on the Occoquan, right. and out in the Shenandoah, and all the way out, obviously, to the Chesapeake Bay. And the boating season mm -hmm. is still going on. And will go on probably till December. It yeah. is. We'll mm -hmm. look forward Thank to you, 6 Susan. and 11. Yes. Sorry. Well done. Yes.